impurities around the metal right now are being covered up with this etch prime. And after this, we let this sit for about five minutes and we'll spray the sealer on top of this. And after the sealer sets up and dries, then we'll be able to put the base coat down, which is the color. The color will set up for 10 minutes and then we will put the clear coat on top of that. Let's rock and roll. All right, come forward. What we're doing is we're putting the uh, final time. We're putting the engine in in the uh, in the '69 Camaro power play. And they're cutting me off, so I can't see. So I'm going to come over here. Let's see what's going on. Slowly. It's going in the TCI front clip. Slowly, a little more. Alright, go back a little more. Alright, down a little more. The only thing we've had to do at this Whoa, point is to modify the oil pan. Alright, back a little bit. Just a hair. We've got the uh, a big sump oil pan back on it bit. from GM. And we cut a little bit of section out of the front of it. Back again. And this front uh, front subframe comes with uh, motor mount set up for an LS1. Everything's, everything's ready to go and ready to fit. We've had the engine in like three times at this point. And this is the last time it's going in for good. What we do is we set it in in the chassis and then we put the motor mounts in afterwards. So that's how kind of how we do this. The motor mounts are in, the right spot. in this we area here. Okay. We're all clear of the pan. And it comes yeah, that pan works. So now we just put a small block Sherry motor mount. That's the way they've got it set up. And put the trans mount in. We'll be ready to rock and roll. These are the headers that are provided with the whole front section for an LS1 in their front end. Maybe all the gaskets and bolts, all the stuff to put it all together. gonna look like it minus the fingerprints. Pretty cool valve covers. What I'm here is I'm gonna finish up the top side of the brake lines, measure from the master cylinder back, and you know that's what you see. Um, so just take a few quick measurements and uh, start bending up the top side of the brake lines. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure back about an inch and a half, inch, inch and a half, just to give me room for the uh, the sleeve and the actual uh, flaring tool. 
know I'm going to start my bed right there. Now that I got my first band, one of the easy ways to figure out where it needs to be bent next is just take the band, put it back on the firewall, and go ahead and mark where the fitting is. So basically the first upper is done, it's going to line up right with the fitting, that will give you enough room to flare. On the second one I'll, 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 flare the fit, I'll flare the tube first and then bend it, that way I can get it in tighter. But that's pretty much a quick simple way to bend up lines, make them look clean and uh, get the job done. What we're doing, the lines have already been bent, the, the key to this is make sure, and we all make mistakes, that the nut part goes on before the sleeve, that way uh, or you don't forget one or the other. It's very simple to do. You get caught up in what you're doing, and, and uh, it's pretty simple to, to make a mistake. So just always keep your head in the game when it comes to brake lines. Uh, he's putting the uh, mandrel on it right now. And it's a 37 degree flare. Um, this isn't a double flare, this is a single flare, and there's a big difference. Um, the AN fittings all use a single flare. So. No matter what size they are, they're all single flare, 37 degrees. This is tip, this is happens to be an old uh, flaring tool, which uh, guys kind of get comfortable using the old tools. It's really that quick. He's uh, put a little grease on the uh, mandrel that goes in to flare it, and uh, it takes a couple of seconds, and you're flared. And that's it. And you're ready to go. You put it on. We use exclusively use uh, Phoenix fittings and uh, we're distributed for them. We are going to be offering a complete um, stainless steel brake line kit for universal for in just about any kind of car. Um, that's uh, that's going to come with all the tubing fittings and anything you need to, uh, to do everything to do exactly what we've done here. Okay what we've done is all the brake lines um, are basically in. Um, as you can see we use, we use our um, line holders. They're a plastic insert that goes in and holds the line. If you ever need to take it out, you can. It's a pretty simple deal. It's a quarter inch hole. Makes it nice and clean. Holds it away from the chassis. Keeps the vibration. As you can see, as you move up here, you're going to see it go over the rear end. The reason it went over the rear end, we try to keep it away typically, but it has bump stops on the shocks and it'll never come up there. Then we have our, our hose connection point. It'll be right here. That's going to go out to the caliper. And then we cut it back across to the other side and do the same with the hose connection point on the op opposite side. Um, pretty basic, pretty pretty easy, nothing too tricky. Always try to keep your brake lines away from anything that's a dry shaft, anything that could possibly break and cut the brake line. You want to try to keep it away from that. Whenever we run a brake line like this, we run it behind the rear end. That way it's, it's not susceptible to any problems with anything that rotating assembly of any sort. So that's what you want to do. Pretty basic, pretty quick. Um, we're going to do a little flaring, flaring, all this stuff. We use AN, uh, Army Navy, nuts and sleeves. It's all um, 37 degree flare, so we don't have any problems with leakage. And we typically use all stainless lines. We don't like to use anything but stainless, uh, just because of the durability. No corrosion and it'll last forever.